and welcome back to Bitcoin Advisors channel. My name is Chris, bringing it to you from Westlake Village, California. Another bright and beautiful day out there. And let's jump right into these charts, following up from what we spoke about yesterday, specifically on the CME chart. And it is holding true here based on the four hour time frame. And what do we have here? So we've got uh, this range we've been sitting between for the past few weeks had we're getting a bunch of pump fakes and um, and dump fakes, right? So a little bit of both. And what did we talk about yesterday specifically? We wanted to see a four hour closure above this pivot at 19,675. And that would give us a let's let's kind of do the measure move here. So I'm going to move this target down to this line. See that target was already hit based off of the one hour breakout, which just failed um, alongside the stock market's rally. So the market was rallying this morning, stock market that is, rallying a bit this morning alongside Bitcoin and Ethereum. And the question is, are we going to get continuation? We've got some major closures coming up here tonight. Um, the two day for CMEs will be closing tonight and we'll cross up above 19,700 bucks. Now, have we seen a $700 move on CMEs in, yeah, in two and a half hours? Of course, we've seen much bigger moves in that time frame. So that's going to be important. What else is the five day will not be closing, but the weekly will be closing and we'll be crossing up above 19,200. So um, I would say this, um, judging based off of the one hour time frame, uh, we did get kicked kind of back inside the range here, playing off a bounce kind of off of this high right now. If this rally, or excuse me, if this move does get faded and we begin to close one hour's back below 19,235, um, I would say that probably gives us a shot back to the bottom side of the range, looking at uh, the first target at 18,885 on the hourly time frame. Otherwise, um, a real easy way to see if the four hour is going to have some follow through because we have how many minutes left until the four hour closes? Uh, two hours and 50 minutes. So three more candles, which will be appearing. And what I like to use is the Fib retracement tool. And where do our weak bounces come in at the 382? Bull traps and bear traps are going to be at the 0.5 and the 618. So if we do get an hourly closure back above 19,940, I would say very likely um, probably going to get that move to the upside. And um, that probably is going to bleed into some of the higher term time frames. We are getting a little bit of a backfill here on the one hour candle. And we'll see if that gets faded here. 15 minute getting a bounce off the green 55 for the second time. And you can see there is a bit of a trend reversal on the 15 minute time frame. We made the higher high, we made the higher low, but put in another lower high, lower low. So, um, yep. We're getting the lower lows, lower highs on the 15 minute time frame, and momentum will remain to the downside as long as Bitcoin is below 19,888. So, if we do see Stokes cross up, volatility cross up on the 15 minute time frame, very likely that bleeds into the hourly time frame. And um, I could almost say with confidence, even on the 15 minute, if we start closing below, um, above 19,945. That'll look good for probably a rally back to the top side of the range. Um, so not too much to talk about there, but this two day closure is going to be important for CMEs um, with spot price kind of leading this market. And, you know, just kudos to Bitcoin and Ethereum because they have been holding up relatively well. 
Uh, during this, um, you know, stock market sell-off. Look, NASDAQ's down another 50 bucks, making new lows here on the two-day time frame, almost closing with a bearish engulfing candle. Uh, and that would, you know, pretty much imply immediate continuation to the downside. However, based on the weekly time frame, yeah, we are taking out this week. If we do close the week anywhere below 11.072, that will look good for some more continuation to the downside. One thing I do want to point out is on this primary chart, which I've got way too many lines on this one. Let's take that off. And let's move that up here. We are coming into the 200 simple. That's the 200 simple moving average, which typically will be a bouncy area. If we do lose this region, um, by taking out this wick right here, I would say bad, bad, bad. And, you know, the Shemitah is coming to town to take your stocks, to take your gold and take your Bitcoins. Um, not going to be looking good um, for the stock market. And here is kind of the uh, the one coin to rule them all, the U.S. dollar. Yes, the U.S. dollar is looking bullish. And I'm going to put my regular chart back on here for lack of a better term, my regular chart. And here's what I want to remind myself of a couple things. One, we did kind of just hit a uh, macro target here of 115. Now, if we do take the uh, swing high to the swing low, we are just grazing up against the 1618 there. Any kind of a closure above there, probably going to get some continuation. Um, additionally, we are closing above the topside Challenger band on the monthly time frame. So can we get a backfill down to 109? Um, any kind of a tick below 107 is going to look good for, you know, a pretty good downwards move in the dollar. Um, but I, you know... Would not be surprised to see another drive of continuation going into next month, given what's happening across the world, right? The uh, pension fund crisis over there in the UK, pensions lost 50%. The government had to go ahead and bail them out. And what else is going on? I heard another rumor of the United States major banks participating in what they're calling environmental tests or something. Well, let's see if we can Google it. U.S. banks participate in some kind of a new banking drill um, in environmental... I don't think that's gonna I don't think that's gonna do it. Ah, that's what it is. They're calling it a climate exercise. And basically, um They're, they're, they're calling it a climate change exercise, but really it's a run on the bank. So apparently in Europe, people are taking all their money out of the bank, right? Your British pound is crashing. The financial system is breaking over there. People are running on the banks. And they're telling people that if you don't put your money back, they're going to close their accounts. They won't be able to use them anymore. And so uh, this exercise came out by Reuters just one day ago. Um, pilot exercise will be strictly for information gathering purposes, calling it exploratory in nature. And will stress tests of bank finances in which the Fed tests large bank strength against hypothetical recessions and the results directly inform how much capital each firm must hold. How is this a climate test test? What? Uh, uh, a climate risk? How does this stress test have anything to do with environmental exercise, climate scenario? 
exercise. Maybe it's the climate of the economy that they're testing. Used to analyze the impact of their portfolios and business strategies. The Fed will then review those findings with the firms to help them build their ability to manage climate-related risks. So it has nothing to do with climate. That's, that's interesting. Um, what else should we note here? What else that further emphasizes my macro target on the dollar heading up to some major highs all the way up to 150 and here's what it is guys if you look at what happened to the dollar in 1980 this is when we got Paul Volcker now keep in mind in 1980 uh, Paul Volcker raised interest rates from 12 to 18 percent so he raised interest rates by 50 percent now, you might say, oh, that's not very much, right? Or you might say that sounds like a lot. Um, but in comparison today, it's not a whole lot because interest rates are only at three and a quarter percent right now. Inflation just came in at 8.3% for the month of August. Wonder what um, September is going to look like. And here's the point I'm making is we went from zero to three and a quarter percent in six months, right? 0% to three and a quarter. That is a nasty rate hike. And it is the biggest rate hikes we've seen percentage wise uh, in history. So that is going to inflict pain on these markets. No wonder the Dow is down 245, S&P's down and NASDAQ's down. So I wouldn't, I, as the market rallied today, I told my guys, I wouldn't be surprised to see the market close in the red today. And what else do we have? We have not only the monthly closure, but the quarterly coming up here. So again, uh, the quarterly is going to be, that's where that is. Okay, log scale, and that gets us up to 151. That looks like a reasonable target based off of this ascending triangle. As long as we don't start closing back below 88 cents, uh, dollar is on full rocket mode, taking out the 2002 highs, and looks like we're heading up to, uh, yeah, so I do imagine this dollar rally ends in some fireworks. We are on the quarterly closing above the topside Trollinger band, and so, yes, you can get a backfill down to that, and if the dollar does come down next month, that'll look good for Bitcoin to have put in some kind of a rally up to, you know, I'd say by the time this quarter closes, you're looking at an addition. Yeah, 107.88, something like that would be the downside risk on the dollar. And that would provide another nice bounce for the stock market. But look at this uh, quarterly closure on the stock market. The quarterly... Looks like it's heading down for this level right here next month. This is known as a falling star, which is a bearish candle with volume. Um, let's take a look at the monthly. Another bearish candle making, again, lower highs and lower lows. So could we get a bounce off the green 55, off the bottom side trolling band? Yes, indeed, we could. And again, Reminding myself that the weekly 200 simple is coming in right at this level at 10,450, I believe. Let me just see if that's correct again. Oh, we're sitting right on it. So if we do lose this region in the stock market, which I, I don't see any reason with the financial crisis is going across the world. China's economy is about to implode because of the real estate market. Um, not only is China imploding, Europe's imploding, and the U.S. housing market is about to implode. I don't know if you have any realtor friends, but everybody's saying all of a sudden there's a slowdown. All of a sudden there's a slowdown in real estate. I wonder why with interest rates. And another harbinger of death and despair here is these 
the 10 year, the two and 10 year um, becoming inverted, right? So the two year is at 4.16. Actually, that makes sense. But the inversion is what's odd. Why is it? Well, it makes sense to for that to be cheaper. Uh, 30 years should be a little bit higher. But either way, these things look bullish. They're taking out their highs of 2018. And I did say the next target was going to be 390 on the 30 year. If we do take this area out next month, you're looking at 4.75, which is ultimately where the Fed is pricing in the interest rates to head up to about 4.6 by the end of the year. So yeah, that's that's exactly right. Um, 4.6. So we're at 3.25 right now. They're going to do another 75 basis points next month. That'll be October. And then another 50 basis points in November. That'll be putting us at four and a half and then a quarter percent uh, the, the following rate hike. I don't know if they raise rates in um, in December, but that's typically, you know, would be a nice, nice time for the market to put in the bounce. So just overall with NASDAQ and these guys kind of crashing and Bitcoin putting in a bit of a bounce, that's why it feels like a bit of a fake out to me. Um, and really, again, you know, that four hour needs to close above the 19,675 and that is going to look good for continuation up to that level, um, even on spot price action. Uh, what else do I want to take a look at? Okay. So let's look at the quarterly, the monthly and the quarterly. So too many lines on this chart. Let's see this one. This one's a little bit cleaner, a little bit clearer. And this is just a indecision candle closing below the green 55 for the second time on the monthly. An open enclosure below the green 55 is typically not a sign of strength. And in fact, on this chart with more history, you see two, you know, uh, closures already below there. Let's see, what about this one? Doesn't have enough price history. And this one has it as well on Coinbase. So a bit of a indecision candle, but it is a red candle, none the least, with volume, which means next month, if we take out this wick or this wick, uh, the immediate continuation from this consolidation. Where does that get us? From the low to the high. Yeah, that's that's uh, revisiting these highs right over here. So just something to consider when you're looking at the larger term time frames. What about this guy right here? The quarterly is looking relatively bearish. So I will do a little bit more of a deep dive analysis on these closures coming into next week. But look at this, we're crossed down, we'll not cross up unless we're above 46,000 on the quarterly. The monthly is still down. And this is a reminder that just because these things are down here does not mean the market, you know, just because it's oversold or whatever doesn't mean you, oh, just buy because it's oversold. As these cross back up, that might be a good indicator to, uh, you know, that the bear market is potentially over. We'll also identify some other, and there will be a bit of a bullish divergence, hidden bullish divergence as the RSI is making lower lows but the price is making higher lows. And actually, if we draw a trend line uh, going back all the way from here, let's see, let's, let's move this trend line back. Oh, that's the log scale. So let's just put on a trend line and see, oops. 
where this potentially lines up from this low. Three touches gives you a, oh, what do you know? Where does that trend line line up? Usually you want to catch the wicks, right? So 6,000. And obviously that's going to go up over time and monthly price action takes a long time to happen. So uh, just food for thought there. All right, let's jump into some altcoins and I'll just start on the higher term time frame for Ethereum. The month is going to close. That looks bearish to me. That looks like a uh, lower high. And again, what happens a lot of times is you get the backfill, right? Uh, which, you know, backfill could come all the way up to 1445. Excuse me, 1545. Let's take a look at the three month as well. That is a is a bit of a gravestone right there. So to be fair, it could be a shooting star or a gravestone. Um, yeah, I could easily see a backfill going back down to the bottom side of this thing at 1,056. That is kind of the target. Um, and then we'll see what happens after that. But again, three month signals will take a very long time to play out. And this does look like a bit of a head and shoulders on the monthly. Got left shoulder, the head and the right shoulder. And if we use this guy, let's use the wicks, huh? If we use, so from this swing high to this swing low, we came right up to the 0 0.5, hit, hit the bull trap button. And that's where I get that 445 target on Ethereum based on the monthly time frame. Um, that's going to be intact as long as we remain in this downtrend, making the lower highs and the lower lows. Okay, what about the shorter term time frames? For those of us down on the four hour chart, let's get rid of this and simply look at just the trend based off of candles and then we'll do swing high trends, right? So uh, the candles here, we just got a closing higher high Let's see, and we did get a higher high there. That's a lower low. So we get the higher low and the higher high. Higher high, higher low, higher high. And there was a slew of lower lows on a closing basis, but this will be the higher high. So just based off of candles on the four hour time frame, we do see a bit of an uptrend formulating here. However, this will not be confirmed as a higher high. Actually, based on a closing basis, yes, it is a higher high than this high. So we've got a higher low, we've got a higher high, higher low, higher high. So a bit of a trend uh, reversal there on, on the four hour time frame for Ethereum. And it looks like we've got a pretty good trend line coming in right here. So are we going to attack 1400 again? Let's throw on those moving averages to see what else is going on on the hourly, on the four hour. What about the six hour? We already got the shot to the green 55, sold off of it. Um, this will be the second, oh, if we get back up there, the third time testing it. So usually you're going to get, th you know, three passes, um, that reject and then and then we break it. So a lot kind of at stake for Ethereum at the moment, but really uh, for myself, you can see there is quite a bit of bearish divergence, hidden bearish divergence coming all the way back from this point until we take out this high. I will not be ready to look for higher targets. So you know, potentially we could uh, see the bullish divergence play out and get a shot to the top side of the range. Any kind of a four hour above 1388, I would be looking for 1473 to get hit. 
and we've got volatility low. We'll cross down below 13, and this is on the six hour. Um, crosses down below 1319. What about the four hour? Crosses down below 1344. So hanging on by life support here. And the one hour crosses down below 1343. So again, if we do get that closure below there, what about the 15 minute? Putting in the lower highs and lower lows on the 15 minute. So what do I think is likely to happen? I personally think um, this was a bit of a pump fake like we've seen just over the past few days. The market makers are pumping it to the downside, pumping it to the upside, grabbing all the liquidity they can. And they probably want to get people bullish one more time. One more time, bullish um, on the weekly time frame. If we do get a tick above 1407, that would look good for a move up to the nine, which is just at about 1481 right now. That will come down closing next week. But as for now, momentum is to the downside. I would not want to fight the trend right now. Although, no, not a trend reversal here, right? We got the higher high, the higher low, but then a lower high. So in order to get trend averted here, I want to see this area taken out at 1932, a higher high and a higher low. And that would look good. You don't want to buy the higher high. You want to buy the higher low. Um, all right, 26 minutes into this video. What's going on? Last few coins to check out. XRP. Coming into that death cross on the on the five day. We'll cross down below 38 cents. We're getting a bit of a back fill on this guy. And there was some news yesterday. The SEC said, hey, Mr. Hinman, you're going to have to turn in all your notes about all your scam meetings. And hopefully this ha helps XRP out. I hope XRP wins the battle. It would be good for crypto in general. But overall, I want to remind myself that in 2018, when, when Bitcoin was making new all-time highs, in 2018, this coin did not make new all-time highs, making this, for the slang term, lack of a better word, a shit coin. It had weakness during the last bull run, and now we have a death cross on the five-day, which let's just see what happened in the last death cross, right? It was right here. And that's what you want to see is the price to get sucked up into the death cross and then spit back out. And that's exactly what happened right there. And if we look at this death cross, it was a perfect death cross. Price action sucked right up into the cross, rejects out the green 55 and was getting shafted down. Let's see what the daily says. Daily will cross up today above 49 cents. So do we have enough in the gas tank to get back up there today? We got five hours left to see. Volatility is declining. So, you know, you could expect some sideways here um, for some time. Perhaps if Bitcoin does not take a leg down. Um, what else did I want to bring up? So that's it for Mr. XRP, I, I would say, look, this guy's going to do whatever Bitcoin does, but more to the downside and less to the upside. And for the second time, we're getting stopped out at the 618. Um, this would be a good indicator. If we get a four hour closure back above 50 cents, that we're at least going to head back up to 55. Um, if we do lose the 382, that'll be your first warning that we are coming down to the 236. If we lose that, I would expect the downside move to play out, which I have been looking for XRP to come down to about 40 cents. Call it 39, you know, not 0.39337 to be exact. That's a green 55. If we lose that area, if we lose the green 55, uh, we're coming back to the bottom side of the range somewhere around 30 cents. Okay, XRP is done for the day. ApeCoin, another one holding it up relatively well. It's been trading sideways actually all week long. And momentum will remain to the downside as long as we're below 574. 
And do we have any divergences? Not really. Let's use this high right here. And that would give you three drives. One, let's see, how many drives is that? Yeah, that would give you the three drives. Price making lower highs, RSI is making higher highs. One, two, three. And that should give you a shot to the bottom side of the range, which to me would be a little bit lower in this case. Um, yeah, I'd probably be looking for this guy to come down to 490. Um, but this trend line on the four hour seems to be important. So first target is going to be this trend line for a bounce somewhere around 509. And then we'll see if that holds. Ethereum Classic. Again, holding it up alongside Ethereum. Um, Ethereum Classic. What do we want to see on this guy? I mean, here's the range high to the range low. Swing high to the swing low. And this is just a weak bounce up to the 382. Um, as long as we are below the screen 55 on the four hour, I would expect the downtrend to continue. Lower highs, lower lows, um, no trend reversal to be discussed until we take out this guy right here. If we do take this guy out, I would be looking for possibly a drive all the way up to 3161. And that is that for this guy. And um, I think that's all I'm gonna cover today. Hope you guys all enjoyed. If you did, don't forget, hit the like button and subscribe. All right, take care. Have a blessed weekend. And I will be coming back with a more macro look to look at the monthly closure, the weekly closure, and the three-month closure coming in on Monday. All right, that's it for today, guys. Take care.